Hey guys, Captain Matt. Good morning. Welcome to another episode of Marathon Sport Fishing. On uh, today's episode, I'm going to show you guys how to capitalize and catch more mahi when you're burning offshore. All right, guys, at the end of the video, I'm going to go over how I make my float and a couple of the other items I got on the boat. I'll go over in detail for you. Hey guys, I'm just getting the line set on the way to the sword grounds. I ran across a log. You'll see I carry a float on the boat that I put out. You'll see it when we get past it. I'm just setting my third line out. Good idea when you're putting a line out for a wahoo as well, you want that thing clipped onto the boat. Just point of reference. So as you can see, we're coming up to the log here. And I carry a buoy with a flag on it. I just got a piece of PVC in it. And I've got about three pounds of um, three pounds of weight underneath that. So you can see bait fish boiling right there next to it. We're gonna see if we pick anybody up. Fish on! Fish on! Oh, double! We're double up. Big Molly jump behind the boat. Big Molly behind the boat. Oh, we got, oh shit, I got three fish on right now. Uh-oh. Three fish on. Third one's still pulling. Worst. I'm gonna get this guy in first. All right, guys. You'll see me managing and moving things around here. The boat's in gear. Rule one, you gotta keep tension on the line to keep the hook in the fish. If you lose tension and you get slack, you're probably going to lose the fish. As you see me moving things around here, I know exactly how much tension's on my line. So when you get hooked up to multiple fish like this, guys, you may have to switch rod to rod while you've got fish on. Again, the boat's in gear. The boat's keeping tension on the fish. I'm going back and forth here between the two rods for a little bit, depending on which fish is where. Ideally, you got one that's a little shorter and you can get him in easy, but that's not always the case. So He's pretty small. I'm going to pop him off when you go. Nice fish. I don't know if you can see him in the water. This one's beautiful. Get that little guy ready. We're going to need him. Back to drag down the stoke. Just in case. Big cow, guys. Big cow. on board again so I'm gonna give you a shot here we're coming up to the um here we're coming up to the log that we went by in the flag and there's gonna be more mahi on this that was just first pass on it all right guys see how easy you can see the flag here you cannot see the log whatsoever so as I'm pulling back up to it doing another pass on it if you didn't have the flag in, you'd have probably lost the log by now when you caught a couple fish. So far, I've went seven tenths of a mile from where I dropped the flag in the water. Hard to believe there'd be only just two of them on there. Fish on, fish on. Got one on the long rod. Feels like another good fish. As you get closer, you want to be prepared to back the drag down just a little. 
I, I put my thumb on up here, hold the line tight up, up against the rod. I'm looking down to see if she's got any buddies following her. I don't see any. But it's another pretty big fish here. Nice mock. Right back at the flag. Trying to see which side the log is on. Don't see it. That's not good. Well, there it is. Log's right there. So, see what happens. We're right in the zone right now. Fish on. Fish on. Right by the log. Another, another big mahi. Another, another big, big mahi. Double. We got two on. We got two on. That's always exciting. Two my on. Two big ones. So I've got the boat in heading hold. We're just going to keep cruising and keep the lines tight while I get these guys in the box. Similar side. Another big cow. I'm trying to figure out where the bull is. What's he's doing? Maybe he's on the other rod. look smaller when they're farther away. Nice. Another nice fish in the box. Okay guys, so I've had the boat with one engine in gear. I am actually heading with the current instead of into it. So that's enables you to keep enough pressure on that line just to keep that back fish hooked as you're working on the front one. A little smaller fish this one is. Typically they run all the same size in the school. Still a nice fish. I'm going to try to flip this one in. and released safe <laughs> all right coming back up on the float guys again every time we went by the log you can see you can see my float there see the log just a little bit to the right of it okay so i burned by the log i think a total of five times you'll notice after you catch a few fish sometimes the rest of them will kind of shut off so i'm picking the buoy up here and I'm going to try a different tactic right next to the log. It's time to change it up because the last two didn't get bit. They're, they're straight coming up underneath the bait right now. They're grabbing the chunks of swordfish from one I cleaned a couple days ago. Bunch of big ones. Here comes the Mahi, they're coming up underneath. You can see them coming up underneath the chunks right now. Something's on this one. Oh, that, that fish is on my rod. Uh oh, don't like him under the log. No, 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 easy. That was awesome. Came up, rod went taken off. Behind the boat right now. Once you hook them up right by the boat here, guys, that fish, if he decides to go around the other side of the boat, you're not going to probably be able to stop him. 
you're better off just moving, going with the fish. Occasionally here, you'll see me bump the boat in and out of gear, depending on where he's at. But you kind of got to follow the fish. You don't want to horse him too much because he's pretty green at this point. Whole bunch of mahi here right now, just a ton of them. All right, guys, I got one rod with a piece of uh, bait on it back there, and I was working the jig rod also when the rod with the bait got hit here. So I'm burning the jig rod in really quick. I can see the tip of the other rod. I can see the fish is pulling it. You've seen him jump out of the water there. That's a big fish. But I'm watching the rod tip as I'm getting the other rod in the boat. If it starts to have any slack or look like it's going to get slack, I would run over and grab it. Put a little pressure on him. What? A lot going on when you've got two rods in the water and you're by yourself. That's a nice fish. Yeah, beautiful. A little ball. There's my ball I've been looking for. All right, guys, if you notice, I'm just kind of taking my time here with this fish. He's already agitated, jumping a lot. Biggest mistake I see people make when, when we hook a nice fish is we try to horse it up to the boat. If you do that, your odds of losing them are substantially higher. I'm just taking my time with them. I've had to adjust the camera, add some stuff to get out of the way. But again, you can see I'm just kind of taking it easy with him. Just trying to get him up here so I can get a shot at him with a gaff. I don't really want him up front of the boat if I can help it. We'll get the boat just tucked up a little here. Beautiful fish. See him way down there. He's just digging right now. He's kind of got his head. He's sideways. By having their head, he's got his head going down. You got to get him, get the head pointing up, and you can gain ground him. Otherwise, it's tough. Got a bunch of other gulp and fallen them down there. They're down pretty deep right now. He's going back out, out, he's gonna come back up. Here he comes, guys. A bull coming to the boat here. Okay, got the bull in the boat. The camera shut off quick there, it's overheating. But we got him. Yes. Okay, guys, my float. When you, go, when you go by that log or pallet or you see something holding fish, this enables you to keep track of it. You can lose a log in about 30 seconds, I swear, if you don't have something marking it. So it's about, you know, 30 inches long. It's a piece of half-inch PVC pipe. The flag, I picked a yellow flag. This is, you can see it really well on the blue water. The float itself, the float's scaled for a certain weight. This is a seven pound float. So in order for this flag to tip upright and be blowing where you can see it, I've got a three pound weight on it, which it'll float about right here. So the weight is attached with a 200 pound, it's a 200 pound snap swivel. You can use zip ties or anything else as well, but this holds on a lot better. So I attach it to that, it's just a standard lead weight. I've got a koozie around it so it's in the boat, it's not banging on stuff. On the top of the flag right here, I've drilled a hole. I've got a couple zip ties which stops 
stops the float from sliding up up the flag. So once you go by that object, throw the flag out. You're not going to lose it that way. I carry one of these one of these little guys with. I've got about 10 extra hooks on them with a four foot leader. So once you hook that fish and you flip him into the box, you can shut your box, unhook the snap swivel and put a new hook on it. You can do that in a matter of seconds. Okay guys, here's my basic Mahi gear setup. Again, three to four trolling rods with you. I like one with a diver on it in case you run into that log. For example, a lot of times there might be wahoo around. So you want to burn a diver down if you don't have a lot of weeds. The spanning rods, two of them with hooks, one with a jig on it. The jig you can throw to try to catch them on that. You can also, if you're going by a patch of weeds, take and flip that jig out by the weed patch, let it sink for 10 seconds, and then burn it back to the boat to see if there's any fish on it. The float, I showed you the float, how to make the float. If you guys have any questions, just shoot, zip me over a comment. Make sure your bait is not frozen. If you don't have cut up bait of your own, squid works excellent. Everything will eat a squid. The spool with the extra hooks. I can't tell you how valuable that is. And my gaff, I like a two inch gaff. If you use a bigger one, those mahi will flip sideways right in between the hook. I've had them do it multiple times. So that's my main gear setup, guys. If you haven't had a chance yet, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. And if today's video helps you out a little bit, shoot me a thumbs up. Again, Captain Matt with Marathon Sport Fishing signing off for today.